Take a look at this. This is hardening elf binaries. And there are some tools to help you find what um, the security properties are of your program. So I'm going to take this and clear it and to move it to the side a little. Let me start with the instructions and we'll quickly get down to the demo. All right, so what you're gonna do, first you create a program which really doesn't matter what it is. This program has a buffer overflow, but it doesn't matter. I could have just made a hello world or something because we're gonna look at other security features. But anyway, here's just a simple program of the type we've used many times before. And now um, you compile it with the default compiler. Um, all right, this will give you the default uh, 64 bit code, and you can run it, and it just print. You give it a password, and whatever you give it, it always tells you fail. You've done this before. So there's a program called Hardening Check. You have to install something called Dev Scripts, of which there are a lot, and then Hardening Check will tell you what security features are in your code. So if I move to the right directory for this, which is ED230, all right, then I've got pwd.c and pwd there, and if I used file on pwd, You'll see it's 64-bit ELF code because I just compiled it by default here. And if I do hardening check, um, and then just the name of the program, PWD, this tells me position independent executable means it can randomly move in memory if the operating system um, supports that. And uh, this tells me if the stack is protected, which it's not, which I think means it doesn't have a canary. Here's something about fortified source functions, read-only, relocations. Um, this means you cannot write into the relocation records, which we were doing before, um, to, to exploit things like the uh, format string. And here's something called immediate binding. I'm not sure what that is. So I see R is Ruhani. Good. I'll make a note of that. Let me do it now before I forget. Um, all right. All right. There. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's hardening check. But the one that's more useful is actually CheckSec, which you have to install. This one seems to give more information. These are really old programs, by the way. But um, I think they've been updated recently because some things have changed, like the format here. But anyway, there's CheckSec. So this tells me a lot of security features. Um, so this is relocation read-only, which is partially implemented. That's what I mentioned before. So the relocation record that point to things like the exit call and the print call and so on cannot be written if they're read-only. Stack canary, there's no canary found. Um, this is a property of Windows I know, and it seems to be the same under Linux, that it does not bother to implement canaries on every stack frame, only on ones that it decides need it because they have a string array of a certain size or something like that. Um, Apparently, stack canaries are bad for performance, so the compilers by default do not implement them on every stack frame. It does have NX enabled. NX means non-executable, and that's what we looked at before. Segments of code that should not be executable are not executable, like the stack. So you cannot inject code on the stack and run it. This is position-independent executable, which means that the program can be relocated to a different memory address, and therefore address-based layout randomization will take effect on it. Um, I forget what the R path is, R path and run pass. Um, symbols, this tells you whether they've been stripped out. They usually are stripped out by default. If you compile with the minus G flag, it will include sim symbols, and then you can do source code debugging if you have the source code. So it's something developers do, but when you distribute a program, you typically strip out the symbols, both to make it smaller and to make it harder for reverse engineer because they won't have the names of the methods or variables. And then there's something called fortify. Um, which I'm not quite sure what that is. So let me go to my instructions here. Um, all right, so there you are. Uh, I show you the symbols. And so now uh, the task of this project is you have to figure out how to turn a bunch of these on and off. You can control all of these with switches when you compile it. So find the flag needed to get rid of position executable, executable. What flag would you do to make it so you don't have PIE? And uh, what flag would it do to add the stack canary? And what flag would it do to add, um, to remove symbols down here? Um, no symbols. All right. Hmm, I'm going to look at, I thought you needed nothing there. I'm going to, I'm going to have to research that one a bit. And there's fortify source functions. I'm not quite sure what it does, but you can turn it on. 
and then binding, you can turn that on too. So there's various things to check out there. Uh, I'm going to research this third one. It seems to me like I've got it kind of backwards. I think these symbols are not included by default anyway. So you don't need any, uh, you don't need any flag to accomplish that. So I, oh, wait a minute now. It has symbols, 69 symbols. Oh. Well, then I take back what I said. These symbols must not be what I was thinking they are. Whatever these symbols are, they're included, and I don't remember exactly what they are. There are some links here to documentation to check out. I don't remember exactly what those symbols are, but you do have to do something to take them out. And it would, anyway, to, to get these extra credit points, you'll have to figure out what they are um, and how to try not to turn them off. So the project, as stated, I think is reasonable and can be done. I just don't remember what the point of these symbols is. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you. I'm going to stop this recording.